Have you ever replaced a battery that really didn't need to be replaced? Or installed a new one in place of one that for sure was failed, only to see the new one fail just a few short months down the road? Learn how to avoid that from ever happening to you again in today's Mighty Minutes. A common mistake is failing to figure out why the battery needs replacement in the first place. It's important to verify the proper operation of the alternator and the rest of the vehicle's starting and charging systems. The condition of the battery cables and cable ends is another important yet often overlooked step. Clean any corrosion from the cable ends thoroughly. And remember, if the cable ends are corroded, the cables are likely to be corroded internally as well. Replace any cables that appear damaged. Perform a voltage drop test on each to verify their condition. When selecting a replacement battery, make sure that you select one that meets or exceeds the OEM's performance specifications. And one more thing to keep in mind, if the vehicle came equipped with an AGM or absorbed glass mat battery, it must be replaced with an AGM design. Now, a couple of safety rules to remember before you even start messing with the battery. Number one, no smoking around the battery or the engine bay. Number two, remove any rings, watches, or other conductive jewelry before you start messing with the battery cables. And always, always, always wear your personal protective equipment. I prefer a full face shield when it comes to battery service as the best protection against any unexpected acid spills. And don't over tighten the cable connections. 50 to 70 inch pounds on tapered top post clamps and 70 to 90 inch pounds on side post terminal bolts. A common mistake is the failure to perform any required battery reset or registration after the new battery has been installed. Now I'm not talking about filling out a card and mailing it in to the manufacturer. No, you got to let the car know that you made the change. Now this applies to not every model, but there are more and more models every year that require this important step. And all it takes is a special tool like this one or a capable scan tool. And it is critical to perform. In some cases, failure to do so could result in the vehicle going into what's called weak battery mode or load shedding, and that affects the operation of the non-critical electrical systems on the car. You know, things like power mirrors or heated seats. Secondly, if you don't perform that step on those models requiring it, it's going to impact the ECM's charging system strategy. It could result in an overcharge on that brand new battery, and that's going to kill it in short order. Oh, one more thing we need to talk about, and that's keeping the memories alive. Now, I don't mean the memories of the family that owns the vehicle. I mean the memories of the various ECUs on the car. You know, as soon as you disconnect that battery, you're going to lose everything from the ECM keep alive memory to the driver's presets in the infotainment system. How do we avoid that from happening? Well, that's the topic for our next Mighty Minute. So until then, thanks for watching.